Welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be going over our linear equation word problems, this time with our advanced difficulty. Make sure to subscribe. Let's dive right into these problems. So we're going to be creating our linear equation or our y equals mx plus b from a lot of these. So we need to be looking for ways that we can uh, find the slope, a y-intercept, our y-value, and keep that x as our x variable. And that's what we're going to be finding. So let's read through this question and get started. A designer is tasked with fitting exactly five questions in a single column of workbook page. There will be a top margin of three and a half inches and a bottom margin of three quarter inches. If each question should take up the same amount of vertical space and the questions and margins combined fill an 8.5 by 11 inch page is shown, what is the value of x in inches? So as you can see here, we're only dealing with vertical uh, numbers. Our diagram is very helpful here. We're trying to find x this value and let's just start by creating our linear equation we can see there is a total of 11 inches so that's going to be on our right side of our equation by itself we can see that we have initial values of three halves and three quarters so these are going to combine to create our y-intercept and then we have five x values, because we have five of these vertical spaces here to represent each of our questions. So we are left with an equation kind of like this. Let's simplify it a little bit so we can solve for x. Uh, so we can see here, we can use our, um, our keywords like total and initial values in order to identify which is our y value and our y equals mx plus b, and which is our y-intercept value, or our b-value, uh, being our b-values, these two combined, and our y-value is 11. So let's go ahead and solve. 3 halves plus 3 fourths. Let's get them to a common denominator. So we have 3 fourths plus 6 fourths, multiplying this uh, fraction right here by 2 for both the numerator and denominator. Now we combine. We have 9 fourths here. Now we have uh, 5x plus 9 fourths equals 11. To isolate our x, we are going to subtract 9 fourths on each side. Now we have 11 over 1 minus 9 fourths, which is 44 over 4 minus 9 fourths. Denominator once again stays the same, and we are left with 35 over 4. 5x equals 35 over 4. And now to isolate our x variable, we divide each side by 5, which means we divide by 5 over 1. We multiply by 1 fifth. After some cross reducing, this turns into a 7, this turns into a 1. And then 7 uh, times 1 is 7. 4 times 1 is 4. We are left with x equals 7 fourths of an inch, which makes sense. If we uh, take a look at the diagram here, 7 fourths is a little bit larger than 3 halves. And each of these vertical margins looks to be a smidge larger than this 3 halves. Usually, our SAT word problems are going to be drawn to scale, so we can always use that as a check. So, 7 fourths is our answer. Let's move on to our next question. A commercial airplane that is 1,500 miles into a 2,500 mile journey is traveling at a rate of 450 knots in still air when it picks up a tailwind of 150 knots. If H is the number of hours remaining in an airplane's flight, which of the following equation best describes the scenario or situation? So, really quick, they give us this conversion for a reason. We're dealing with miles here. Uh, we're not dealing with nautical values. So let's just go ahead and convert all of our, uh, our not values into mile values. And uh, something that's really important here tailwind in the same direction if you can imagine this in your mind it's kind of like the planes traveling and it's getting pushed along by a tailwind that's adding to the speed so we really have a speed of 600 knots and then we start with uh 100 1500 and we are 
into a 2,500 mile journey. So it looks to be either A or B. Many students here are going to pick B because they just combined the not values. Remember, we need to convert this before uh, because if 1,500 is in miles and so same with 2,500, we need to convert the 600 not value into miles per hour. So we would have to multiply 600 by 1.15, which is going to be a larger value than 600. 690 makes sense. Let's go ahead and check this by using uh, calculator here. Oh, they're trying to use Desmos. If you just use a handheld calculator, you're going to find that 600 times 1.15 is indeed 690. So our value or our answer is going to be answer choice A. All right, next question. An airplane begins its descent, begins it, its descent to land from a height of 35,000 feet above sea level. The airplane's height changes about minus 4,000 feet every three minutes. Around the nearest minute, and approximately how many minutes will the plane land? Assume that the airport runway is at sea level. So, we just need to create our linear equation. Uh, we are given our slope and our y-intercept here. So we just need to find when its y-value, or its height, is equal to zero, meaning uh, zero at sea level. So, uh, our initial value begins, is our keyword here. So our y-intercept is 35,000. And then we can, um, they give us a rate of change here, minus 4,000 feet every three minutes. So minus 4,000 over 3x plus 35,000. And we need to be equal to a y value of zero if we're going to land on that runway. Because that runway is at sea level, meaning it is zero feet above sea level. So we're going to have to infer that value from this question. That's very important here. Because uh, now we only have one variable and we can solve for this x variable. First, we're going to have to subtract 35,000 from each side. So we have negative 35,000 on our left side equals negative 4,000 over 3x. And then we can get rid of this negative 4,000 over 3 by multiplying each side by negative 3 over 4,000, our reciprocal. So uh, they do provide, make sure uh, that you guys know SAT math, they, we do have a calculator for every single question. So uh, make sure to use yours as well uh, here for our calculator. I won't use a calculator because every question on the SAT, you are allowed, uh, well, you should be able to solve it without a calculator as well, just in case battery dies or something like that. So everything cancels out on our right side. We are just left with X, of course. Our negative signs cancel out on our left side. So let's go ahead and do this multiplication. 3 times 35,000 is just 35 times 3, and we add three zeros to the product. So 5 times 3 is 15. We are left with 105, 0, 0, 0. And then we divide this by 4,000. Uh, we have three zeros on each, so we can cancel out each of those. We are just left with 105 over 4. So let's go ahead and do that division here. 4 goes into 105 2 times 8. We have to 25, 4 goes into 25, 6 times, 4 times 6 is 24, and then 1 fourth is 26.25. 26.25 is a decimal value, but we are asked to round to the nearest minute. Nearest minute here is 26. So approximately it will take 26 minutes for the plane to land on that runway. We got it correct. This was a little bit of a more difficult question requiring a little bit of inference and also uh, calculations here. But with all of these SAT math questions, they are achievable. So last question here, let's get to it. Erica has $30 saved and receives an allowance of $10 each week. 
Her older brother Paulo has twenty dollars saved and receives an allowance of fifteen bucks each week. If Erica and Paolo save all their allowance money, which of the following equations give the number of weeks it would take for the siblings to have the same amount of money? This is something that we'll see a lot when we go to systems of equations, uh, but this is rather an easy question. We just need to set up two different um, equations for Erica. Well, so one for Erica, one for Paolo, and then set them equal to each other to find our answer. So let's first do Erica's one. So why? We don't know the total value yet. So why, and then we start with $30, that's our initial amount, that's our y-intercept. Then $10 each, that means 10 is our slope. So um, Erica's equation is y equals 10x plus 30. And then Paolo's equa equation, $20 saved, that's our initial amount. And then $15 each week, that's our slope. Paolo's equation is uh, y equals 15x plus 20. And then uh, you might be asking, oh, none of these answer choices look anything near that. Well, this is where we take a look at the rest of our uh, question here. If Erica and Paolo save all their allowance money, which of the following equations gives the number of weeks that it would take for the siblings to have the same amount of money? That means our total amount, our y, is actually going to be equal to, so we can just set the equations equal to each other. We are left with uh, 10x plus 30 equals 15x plus 20. And of course, uh, the variable won't always be x. They're using w here, so we just substitute out our x for the w value. And we are left with answer choice A. We can see Erica's equation on the left and then Paolo's equation on the right and being set equal to each other. That's all we had to do here. Uh, we get the answer correct, of course. So that is all for uh, today. This was our second advanced skill. I hope you guys enjoyed these. I really recommend going over and over again because if we can knock out all of our uh, beginning, our, our foundational and our medium skills, at the end of the test, we're just going to be left with these advanced questions. And if you can do all of these as well, that is perfect. So make sure to subscribe. Goodbye.